All right, these are awesome as well. Uh, these New Orleans signs, they look to be hand painted. The price on them is five bucks. So if you have any New Orleans fans in the house, let me know, I love New Orleans. It's one of my favorite cities to go to. Let me bring this in some better light and I'm gonna show you something on the back here with this. All right, everyone, this week we are in the burbs. So getting out of the country for a little bit and trying to find our fun estate sale of the week. Looks like it's right over here to the right. So let's get parked and get on the list. We're here on the first day this time. Well, look at that. For the first time ever, I got to be number one on the list. So one of the reasons I really wanted to be number one today is because there's these Flintstone cookie jars in the box that I really want to get. So hopefully I could snag them ahead of everyone else. All right, so while I'm sitting here waiting to go into the sale, 10 minutes beforehand, they announced that they're gonna let everyone else in early. And they were very nice because they know me and they ran out to me in the car and they said, Dominic, come on, let's go. We're gonna go in the house now. So being number one on the list, I didn't have much time to film an entrance, but here we go, and here's what happened. Oh, this is nice. I saw this. It's a dancing skeleton. This is really nice. We're going to start with this. Pick this one up. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. We're going to test if this thing works. If it does, it'll be amazing. Hey, prime time. I'm glad you got number one so you could use those big hands and grab all of us. <laughs> Pays to be number one, everyone. Two bucks a piece for these. These are really nice. This is what I saw that I was looking for. These Flintstones cookie jars in the box. Love them. We got good old Fred here. And we have Barney Rubble as well. Nice. All right, so as you can see, I took the Fred and Barney cookie jars out of the boxes. They are looking awesome. I just took some photos to list them. Now, one of the cool design elements about these cookie jars is they safeguarded the lids so that it's not as easy for them to fall off the top when you try to remove it and have an accidental crash onto the ground and then they uh, break. And the way that they did that is they implemented this suction design on the bottom of the lid as you could see there now it's easy enough to get off if you exhort a little bit of force on it but it's not so easy that it's just going to you know easily come out you could even hear that noise so that's a great design element i love it uh, the insides of these look really nice as well as you can see i mean it's just brand spanking new in there so yabba dabba do all right, these are the Looney Tunes mugs that uh, you saw me uh, pulling away down here to get to the cookie jars. Uh, these usually go for about 10 bucks a piece when they're out of the bag. In the bag, you get about 20 for them, but for 10 bucks a piece, it's not really worth it. So you just have to be careful uh, with the pricing. And again, you just have to be careful with pricing. Um, and you know just keep in mind that just because something says you know star trek on it and it's in a box doesn't necessarily mean it's valuable sorry uh, for all the star trek fans on this one but this is a set of four different glass mugs there in the original box you could see on the back it says uh, which four come in the set so all four of them are here for uh, 20 bucks total uh, people try to sell this online for 35 plus shipping and can't even move it uh, after multiple attempts. So uh, cool if you're a Star Trek collector, you know, keep in mind estate sales are good places to pick up things for good value, but for resale, not good. All right, I'm back in the garage. I was in that uh, other room because I was just trying to snag those cookie jars before anyone else did. But this is awesome. Look at this frame. You've got so many cool different um, Broadway acts and stuff on it. You've got West Side Story, Phantom of the Opera, Fiddler on the Roof, Wicked, Oklahoma, Mamma Mia, shout out to Mia, Mamma Mia, I know she's watching, Jersey Boys, Music Man, you've got Coca-Cola there. This is awesome. 
three dollars only. So this is sweet. This is going to be an easy sell because there's just so much to it. It's nice and bright and colorful. I absolutely love it. You can see on the back it says Fredericks. So we're going to add this one to the box. All right, these are awesome as well. Uh, these New Orleans signs, they look to be hand painted. The price on them is five bucks. So if you have any New Orleans fans in the house, let me know, I love New Orleans. It's one of my favorite cities to go to. Let me bring this in some better light and I'm gonna show you something on the back here with this. The original price on it was 50 bucks, wherever they sold it from. So, you know, I could list them individually or I could list them as a pair. And we have a signature on the bottom from the artist who I'm gonna have to research. I like this one as well because not only do you have the saxophone, so play that saxophone music, everyone. <laughs> we've got the actual musician here also. In this one, we've got the musical instruments coming off of the street lamp, which is really cool. So. These are really nice signs. Wow, what a great area over here. Figures that we had uh, saxophones near the lovely ladies. So they were calling me in here, folks. So if you're wondering, do I look at CDs? Yes, I do. I don't normally find things, though, uh, that are good for me to flip as you could see examples of what they have here and it's just nothing good either overproduced stuff or um yeah just like some homemade things and yes yeah, so if you're wondering i caught this one out of the corner of your eyes because i know we have a lot of simpsons fans another very overproduced cd you could get it you could get it for less than six bucks all right, we're gonna go for the Captain Morgan Original Spiced Rum hat. Uh, just one dollar on the hat. Uh, the only catch is that on this side, you could see there's like a little bit of a stain. Probably came from some rust or something that leaked onto here. So I'm gonna have to work my magic here and uh, clean this out of here, scrub it out. But uh, you know, might be able to get like 25, 30 bucks for the hat. I can't miss for a dollar investment, and the bright colors really help sell it. Nice, nice hat. And yes, as you can see, I have a sold sticker here on painter's tape so that people don't go into my boxes and start grabbing stuff out of there. So I really like this purse here. I love all the colorful characters on it. There's a little shiny element with the sequins. You have these nice little plastic beads on it. They're different colors has a nice boxy shape, has this nice little snap flap over here as well. And you can also see that it has some nice characters on the other side as well. So really cool piece. It does have to be cleaned up a little bit, but I think we could uh, do it some justice. And oh, look at that. We even have uh, some characters on the bottom. So I'm definitely gonna pick this up for the five bucks. Hey, prime time. I love how you picked up all of those pictures when you first came in. Well, I would love to grab you too, uh, Marilyn, because you know how much of a fan I am of you. Thanks, Primetime. Why don't you run your fingers up in my hair? <laughs> okay, it's a little creepy, but oh, oh, look at this. You've got a little bend here, Marilyn. Yeah, sorry, Marilyn, I'm gonna have to let you down on this one. I can't take you home with me because of that. Why don't you go? Look over on that bookshelf over there. Man. What? Um, okay. <laughs> this is so what's happened to me every time I go to these sales. You know what? As interesting as these books look, I'm not going to pick them up because eBay has become increasingly prudish over the years and so I'm really staying away from this stuff uh, from an eBay perspective. All right, little reenactment here, but uh, right after I looked at those books, this like 85 year old guy comes in with his wife, Betty. I'm not kidding, that was her name. And he says, uh, hey, he must've recognized me or something. He goes, hey, you're the book guy. He goes, you see those two books over there? And I said, yeah, I saw them. I said, but I decided to leave them there for you. And he started laughing and he goes, 
Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, oh my God, it was just so funny. Oh man. All right, so from there, go over here. We've got some books, soft covers, two for a dollar, hard covers, two bucks each. Most of them are overproduced books like James Patterson, but this stuck out to me, and this is what I always tell you, have search strategies so you know to look for things that are in these box sets. So even though the way this one is positioned, you can't immediately tell what it is, you could still tell from the outline that you have something within a box set. So when we flip it over, we've got a nice classic Isaac Asimov book set. And they are soft covers. This will be one price, so like 50 cents, and you could flip this into like 30 bucks with the shipping. So uh, that's nice. And it'll go, oh, there you go, it's a, it's a dollar. So still, that's a great price. And yes, I know to use a heat gun. Now, some of you might have caught in the corner of your eyes this Death and Life of Superman book and maybe wondering why I didn't pick it up because you know how much I'm into comic books. But just as an FYI, uh, anything that has something to do with the death of Superman, it's so overproduced that it's pretty much worthless. Like you could get this for like four bucks, including shipping, plus it's damaged. All right, that's the room that I came from. We've got another room over here. And I can't believe this is still sitting here. For $5, this is signed by the artist. When I first saw it, it kind of looked like Popeye the Cellar Man to me, but it's on the most famous street in New Orleans, Bourbon Street. This is really cool. He's got the tip jar and everything. It's nice and bright and colorful. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna pick this one up for five. Really cool. All right, so swinging around from where that New Orleans sign was, uh, this was pretty interesting. I actually haven't seen this before, although I am a, a fan of Howard Stern, this Crucified by the FCC uh, box set. When I saw this initially, I thought maybe it would have some value to it, but all that's in it is a booklet. This is what came with it. And I'll show you what's underneath. There's two cassette tapes. The cassettes are in there, I checked, but they made a billion of these, so it's only worth like 15 bucks or so. So I'm gonna pass up on it. And again, just be careful with pricing, cause you know, someone will see something like this, like the sealed Garth book set, which by the way, you can see was on clearance for 454. Yet the price here is 20, you could get it online for 15. So always be careful. So video games could definitely be tricky. Uh, I want to give you a little tip from my childhood here. So uh, these here are passing up on because they're overproduced and they're sports related ones like you know racing car games that people just really aren't interested because they're tied to a specific year. There are exceptions, but these particular ones are not. Um, over here, we've got a computer game and this is something you'd play on PC. So you see you have the discs in here that will go in. There's multiple discs, only a dollar. Here's the thing to look for, Sierra. Keep that word burned into your head because they made so many great games, including Leisure Suit Larry. I played them all the time as a kid with my brother. And uh, people are looking for these for nostalgia reasons. They originally came in a cardboard box, but um, this will do because someone could just use these discs and you know, just play it from there. So this go for about 25 bucks, so not bad for a dollar. Okay, so from over there to over here, this is something that caught my eye because I always look into the trivets and this does have some nice color to it. And as you can see here, it's from JZH in 1948. So you might think, again, oh, grab that, grab that, it's gotta be worth a lot of money. Uh, problem is it's not, it's worth about 20 bucks, but it's still a really cool piece. And um, some of the things I like to do on this channel is to show you some really cool pieces. Uh, even if it's not worth a lot, you know, it is neat. I cannot even tell you how many people have been trying to grab that purse and the Bourbon Street sign, even though I have the sold sign on the box. It's crazy. <laughs> At least I know people like it. All right, so I definitely like the welcome frog sign for a dollar, <laughs> even if I couldn't sell it online. Definitely something that this is prime time would love. I may even just give it to her because she loves stuff like this. This is this perfect, <laughs> great for her. So put that here to guard the purse. And um, over here we have some sneakers. 
Uh, footwear is five bucks each. This set is about 25, so when you factor in shipping, uh, these Nikes aren't worth picking up. Plus they're a little worn down, so yeah, I don't really feel like spending the time on it for 25. But these Adidas here are very nice. Uh, yeah. They're in great shape. I love the feel to it. It has like a nice felt feel. Uh, the size is nice. It's uh, a 10. It's a US 10. Uh, they're in great condition. So uh, they look like they were barely used and I cannot find the specific uh, model uh, on eBay right now. So uh, I'm gonna pick it up for the five and hopefully flip it for you know at least 50. So you know we'll see how we do with those. Give a little double tap and then uh, look through the shirts here. So two dollars on the clothing and um, oh we got uh, Hooters one there, <laughs> State of New York Hooters in Syracuse. It's very specific to my area though so I don't know. Uh, Plus, there's no great image on it. So now, let's put that one to the side. Let's keep going. Oh, I see some animation stuff here. And oh, look at this. There are so many Turtles fans out there that would love this. So this is a uh, sweatshirt. And the size on it, let's see if we can make the size out on this. Um, I can't, maybe, it looks like maybe a large. But that's good, at least it's not like a small or medium. So, all right, we're gonna add the turtles in. Definitely gotta give the turtles a double tap. We got more down here, let's see what we got. Ooh, Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty. You just saw me recently pick up that uh, Rick and Morty Funko Pop. And actually look at this, it's made by Funko Pop. So this is not vintage, this is a more modern shirt. But you know what? We could uh, snag two of them here. So let's look at the full image on this one. We've got them in the spaceship here. Uh, looks like they're both larges, so we'll, we'll probably probably list these two together, this one and this one as well. And uh, yeah, wow, that's why we say dig to the bottom and uh, we'll add those in there. And let's go take a look over here. Here we have a champion, but uh, let's see here. I don't think there's anything real special about this one. Let's take a look at the label. It's ripped on the label. No, I don't see anything that would make me want to grab that one. Let's take a look over here and dig through the rest of these shirts. That's just pretty standard safari shirt. Uh, just check, see if there's any images on these shirts. This is uh, Chevy Country. Okay, nothing great about that. Uh, this is Let's see here. Um, well, another Chevy shirt, Lake House shirt, starter. I will look for vintage starter stuff depending on what it is, but this is just too bland for me. You know, you really want the starter stuff to be associated with like a team or just some cool element, but just plain gray it doesn't really do it uh, for me or, or the people on the uh, reselling uh, market who are looking for vintage starter. So I'll put this stuff back and make a little neat and then we'll move on all right so i'm going to spare you a little bit of time i did look through uh, these shirts over here and pants didn't really see anything i was interested in so uh, we're going to move on out of this room and see what else is in the house all right we're gonna check out what's upstairs so i'll just grab my box which is on the bottom there we'll just take it up and see what we've got over here So a few things over here uh, just to point out. So these are vases by Susan Paley through GAMS. Um, for the most part, they go for like 15, 20 bucks. So you could see the $10 price uh, on them. Um, these have a $5 price for the uh, cups. Um, you know, condition wise, you can see we've got a chip off the ceramic. This would have been the only one that I was interested in because they didn't make too many that were African American. Uh, but this does have some paint loss to it here. So once in a while you could find one, like a rare one that might go for like 60 or something, but usually it's about 15 to 20. Same with the Anico Creations, you know, which is why I'm gonna leave them here. They're cool, so shout out to all the cat lovers, but I'm gonna pass. Now down here, what catches my eye is this purple glass vase. 
it's neat, but it's really not that old because you could see there you have the uh, recycling symbol on it. You might be able to get like 20 bucks out of it. So, you know, it's good if you just want to come here, you know, and grab it and have it for yourself. But again, you got to factor in handling time, shipping, double boxing, all that stuff. So, no, I'm going to leave it here. Yeah. All right, and last but not least, I want to show this boot shaped glass mug from Music City, the Wild Horse Saloon in Nashville. And I want to give a big shout out to the lovely Lina Hill because I know she's a big Nashville fan and I know she's watching. So there you go, Lina. Big time shout out for you. All right, so this is interesting here. It's been sitting around here upstairs for $5. Uh, one of the things that I think some people may have missed on it is that we do have a signature here. Now, this is Adam Dirtz from uh, Counting Crows. The problem is that, first of all, the placement of the signature and the color used for the ink really camouflages onto here, so that's a problem for someone that wants to display it. Also, you can find reprinted photos with his signature on it for like 15 bucks or so, so unless this came with like a COA or something, certificate of authenticity, I'm going to pass up on it. All right, so this house does not have a basement to look at. It really was the garage that bottom floor there and up here and even here you can see some of the rooms were sealed off so I think I did my primetime treasure hunt and it's time to check out and find out the total price all right so we loaded up here today very happy with all of these great purchases and the total price for everything here is sixty six dollars so I'm very happy about that um, this was really something I was looking forward to getting and really to make it make the most sense I really want to try to get uh, the Fred and the Barney one together because I'm going to lot them together and try to sell them for uh, $85. I was so surprised that this was just two bucks because um, I saw people trying to sell this online for like $80 or something. So um, the only thing, I don't know if it works, so we're going to have to go back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters and check it out. If it costs more money, I would have tested it, but for $2, you know, I figure even if it doesn't work, someone would just want that for a decoration. But, you know, we'll go back and check it out. Well, back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters, and uh, let me show you something. Mrs. Primetime really liked that welcome sign with the frog, so uh, let me show you where she put it. Yes, as you can see here, Mrs. Primetime added the welcome frog right over here. It matches up very well and adds some nice uh, additional charm to the space, which she does an awesome job with in her gardening and all these little you know, creatures and stuff that she puts in here. It really, really looks nice. This is one of the reasons I thought of getting the frog for Mrs. Primetime is she put this little frog in this little kidney shaped uh, area here on the uh, front lawn. So I really like how this came out. I did the manual labor for it, but uh, she did all the decorative uh, aspects of it. So Mrs. Primetime loves those frogs. All right, so here's the skeleton. I did take some of the dust off of the bottom. It runs off of four AA batteries that are on the uh, base. So it does have some batteries in there right now, but they're old. So the problem is when you press it right now, he seems to make a little bit of light in his eyes. And sometimes I've seen him move around, but there's a switch I gotta press on on the bottom that would move him into uh, demo mode. So I'm gonna put that on right here and we'll see what happens when we do that. So he's not really responding and doing much right now. So batteries might be dead. So I'm going to put in some new AA batteries and we'll see what happens with them. 
So as you can see from these little blue flakes, there is some slight corrosion that came out from one of the batteries, the one in this slot. So they've probably been in there for a while. So got some new ones here. Let's try it out. All right, here we go. The moment of truth and... Check this out. Ah, oh, he works. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so that's what it was. It was just a matter of the batteries uh, needing to be changed. And I bet you that that's why it was $2 because they probably saw the batteries were in it. They pressed it. It didn't look like it worked. So they just charged two bucks on it. So wow, awesome deal. And uh, we should be able to get a great price on this now. Whoa, speaking of Halloween items, look at this. Imagine trying to ship her. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, crazy. All right, well, after that great news with the skeleton, I wanna give you a little tip on something that I do when I pick something up and realize later on that there's something missing from it. And so uh, what I'm talking about in this instance is this Noah's Ark that you saw me pick up a few videos ago. Now from the front, it looks awesome. And that's what really drew me into it. Uh, but when I got it back and I was looking it over closer, I saw, you see how it says enter two by two. So I'm matching up the animals and stuff. And you have the two camels and the two zebras. And then you have the giraffe there. You see that? Well, over here, you could see the footing is empty and we don't have a giraffe there. So that got me to thinking, how am I going to sell this if I'm missing a giraffe? And plus that looks bad having those two footing slots uh, like that. So I said, well, I, you know, I looked on eBay to see how much it would cost to get like a replacement giraffe, but this is vintage and how am I gonna find the exact giraffe, right? Uh, chances are pretty low and sure enough, it didn't exist. Now, if I had great woodworking skills, maybe I could make one, but I'd still have to try to match it up to make it look vintage, so that would be a problem. So I put it to the side, and in the back of my mind, I had the impression of those two footings. And so when I went out after that, I was looking to see if I saw any stray animals or anything that I could put in there that had those footing marks. And I wanna give a big shout out to Robin, who I know is watching this right now. Uh, she's a fan of the channel, and she actually invited me to come over to her home to do a private primetime pick. And that was a lot of fun. So shout out to Robin, had an absolute blast there. We didn't film it or anything, but it's so much fun. And um, when I was digging through one of the boxes, she's gonna recognize this. This really cracked me up. I found this Roadrunner and look at the footings. So what I figured I could do is I can make a Roadrunner Noah's Ark. And I thought that would be absolutely hilarious. I'll try to hold it up here. If I could show it to you what it would look like without the Roadrunner falling over on it. Let's see here. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> I showed it to Mrs. Primetime and she was dying laughing. And when I got that reaction out of her, I knew I had a good idea with this. So I think it's going to be the world's only Roadrunner's Noah's Ark. Oops, he just fell to the ground. Don't worry, he's plastic. Um, actually, he's rubber. He's rubber. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift it like that. I'm just going to glue the footing uh, on. I got some crazy glue and stuff and um, yeah, we'll see what happens with it. But you know, sometimes that's what you got to do. You got to be a little creative and uh, find a way to uh, get that item listed somehow. Here's the final product. <laughs> Looking good. How cool is that? Oh my God, I love it. Well, thanks everyone for coming by today. It really was a lot of fun. As you can see, Daisy is here guarding the treasures as usual. Oh, she hears fireworks. Look at that. See, she's fast at work right there. Good old Daisy. She doesn't just lay down and sleep all the time. That's about 95% of the time. The rest of the time, she actually does some work. So I guess that was enough for her. She's heading on in. 
um, pass along any comments to Daisy. I'll be sure to uh, pass them on uh, to her. So thanks so much, everyone. I really appreciate it. And uh, let me know what your favorite uh, item was down below in the comments. See you at the next one. Take care. Who's that, Daisy? Who's that?